About a week before the due date for the birth of her child, a special ED teacher, Belinda Temple, was killed together with her unborn child. Her husband and son were the first to have seen this. But who killed her? Was it her husband or one of her students? Let's dive into the events around the murder of Belinda Temple. Tom Lucas, Belinda Temple's father, said she always had a smile on her face and that she was a native of Nacogdoches, Texas. She was a lover of both life and people. At the time known as Belinda Lucas, she first met David Temple in 1989 at Stephen F. Austin University in Nacogdoches, the same year he assisted the football team in capturing the school's first conference championship ever. The Temple of Doom linebacker David Temple played linebacker in high school and college, and Belinda Lucas was a student athlete as well. David and Belinda Temple both went on to get education master's degrees. After having their first child, Evan Temple, in 1995, they returned to Katy, Texas, David Temple's hometown. David and Belinda Temple started establishing their journey in a small town called Katy Buck Bindeman. A witness in David Temple's second trial stated on the witness stand that Katy was the kind of town where people would wave to their neighbors. Beginning their careers at high schools, both Temple's David Temple became a teacher and football coach at Alif Hastings High School, while Belinda Temple became a special education teacher at her husband's old school, Katy High School. Belinda Temple learned she was expecting a girl in the summer of 1998, and she chose the name Aaron for the child. Friends claimed that she and David Temple were devoted parents. Thus, at the time, it seemed as though the family might benefit from the addition of a new kid. Natalie Scott, a former neighbor, claimed that Belinda Temple, in her excitement, painted her home a beautiful bright yellow and set up a nursery there by herself. She claimed that Belinda Temple informed her that Aaron's due date was approaching in early January when she gave her a tour of the baby's room. Belinda Temple received a call from Evan Temple's daycare on January 11, 1999, asking her to take him home since he didn't feel well. She started attempting to contact her husband at work as she had a full day ahead of her. He was initially nowhere to be found, but she eventually found him around noon. Evan Temple was taken home by Belinda Temple after being picked up and she went back to school after her husband's arrival. Around 3.30 that day, Belinda Temple finished her shift. She bought some homemade soup from her husband's parents before leaving for her own house. David Temple claims that he departed to perform errands with his son when his wife arrived. He also added that he got back home around 5.35 o'clock that day. He claims that after seeing the back door smashed and the gate open, he raced to the Ruggiero house where he found his wife's lifeless body and dialed 911. A shotgun blast to the back of the head killed Belinda Temple. The size of the wound led the police to believe that she had been shot with a 12-gauge shotgun. Nevertheless, despite their search, they were only able to locate two rifles in the home and no shotgun. As police looked for a suspect in the murder, the usually tranquil neighborhood had become a flashpoint of unrest. But as the investigation into the crime scene went on, police realized that what had at first seemed to be a burglary didn't match what they had observed there. Sergeant Dean Holtke of the Harris County Sheriff's Office said, As an investigator, you just know when you see something that doesn't look right. He said that the scene appeared staged. Glass from a broken door is not visible where you would expect it to be, but it is present in unexpected places. But the door wasn't the only issue. The police reported that drawers had been unlocked but were unaltered. David Temple was brought in for questioning by the investigators that evening. When his wife arrived home that day at 3.45 p.m., he reported to the police that she went upstairs to rest. He claimed that he brought Evan Temple to the park while she rested before heading to Home Depot and Brookshire Brothers. Former Harris County Detective Chuck Leithner claims that David Temple's testimony contained contradictions. He claimed, for instance, that when he asked David Temple to specify the name of the park he and Evan Temple visited, he gave two different parks. The prosecution's case against David Temple would depend heavily on the timing of his movements and the circumstances surrounding the death of his wife. And although they had not yet identified a potential motive, it didn't take long for them to learn that David Temple was having an affair. After the murder, authorities questioned three kids who resided in the house behind the temples four days later. The children reported hearing a big boom or gunshot while watching a movie after getting home from school. 
Brookshire Brothers and Home Depot's surveillance footage was also reviewed by the investigators. These videos showed David Temple about the time the police thought his wife had been shot. It appeared as though he had a rock-solid alibi. Around this time, Paul Looney, then David Temple's attorney, contacted authorities to report claims he had heard about Riley Joe Sanders III, another neighbor of the Temples. Belinda Temple's acquaintances informed investigators that she was unhappy in her marriage as the probe progressed. She was married to an extremely authoritarian man. David Temple, too, was spending a growing fraction of his time away from the house. After Belinda Temple passed away, investigators learned that David Temple had begun an affair with Heather Scott, a co-worker at the Hastings Ninth Grade Center. David Temple and Scott initially played down their friendship. But as the probe continued, their affair became clear. By the time the holidays rolled around, David Temple's relationship with Heather Scott had progressed to the next level. According to Cahan, he told his wife that he was going on a hunting trip for the new year, but in reality, he was sneaking off with Heather Scott. After Belinda Temple was murdered, authorities posted a billboard with an offer of a reward for information leading to the capture of her killer. There was no evidence of blood or glass on David Temple's shoes, according to forensic tests. Almost two years after David Temple's wife Belinda was murdered, in June 2001, he wed Heather Scott. The FBI crime lab data from the scene of Belinda Temple's death were released years after her death. There was a match between the gunshot residue found on David Temple's clothes and the residue found on Belinda Temple's clothes on the day she was slain. After being apprehended at the end of November 2004, David Temple finally stood trial for the first time in October 2007. The defendant's legal team contested the credibility of the gunshot residue. The murder weapon used to kill Belinda Temple was never located, but the police were able to determine that a double-aught buckshot shell, typically used for hunting deer, was used. Sanders's father testified that his son was free to use his weapons whenever he pleased. The wadding found in Belinda Temple, according to DeGuerin, was from a federal shotgun shell fired from a 12-gauge shotgun, the same kind of shotgun shell that was in the Riley Joe Sanders shotgun. Sanders now 37 years old, testified during the second trial that he and groupmate Cody Ray Ellis had skipped the day's final period of school in order to use marijuana before the murder of Belinda Temple. After he dropped Ellis off, he said, he and a couple of other buddies went to Sanders' place. Sanders claims that his father woke him up later and that when he went outside, he saw law enforcement and media gathered around the Temple's house. Prosecutors continued to insist that David Temple had murdered his wife while the defense argued that Sanders was responsible. Prosecutors tried to establish that David Temple, at the time of Belinda Temple's death, was a hunter and in possession of a 12-gauge shotgun. In addition, it came out throughout the trial that David Temple's family had a collection of 12-gauge shotguns. Schneider, speaking for the defense, argued that Conventional wisdom tells us that I should accept your verdict or respect your verdict, and I can't do that. Evan's faith in his father's return remains unshaken despite their separation. David served. For a decade, he was locked up and kept apart from his son. After a 20-hour trial, the jury deliberated on a sentence that might have varied from probation to life in prison. The sentencing phase of the trial ended in a mistrial because the jury could not reach a verdict. The August bond amount for David Temple was $1 million. For the time being, however, he will remain in jail pending the results of a retrial, which is set to take place in March 2020 when a third jury will be convened to decide his penalty. This case still remained unsolved even when the deceased husband was thrown into jail. For more crazy crime stories, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel.